Hi there. Got a lidded vessel here, maple, some beautiful green in both the lid and the vessel itself. Walnut for a finial and a little button inside on the lid. And this video is a lot longer than I like. I like to keep them to a half hour maximum, but I had a lot of problems with this one, mainly in the finish, but a number of other things. And I'm not gonna count them all up now because you don't wanna see them twice. So stick around, tell me at the end what you think of this. I hope you like it. Hi there. I found this piece of maple. I believe I started turning this at least three or four years ago. And for some reason I quit, I put it aside, I never got back to it. A few days ago, I took it out and I decided I was going to keep turning this. So I got it shaped the way I wanted and then I started putting Minwax Wipe on Polyon, gloss. And there's a problem, it's nice and shiny, just glows beautifully, the grain shows up wonderfully, but it has this orange peel effect. Now, I've always read that orange peel comes from spraying, generally, or from some oils in the wood. Well, this piece of maple has been dry for a very long time, so it's not the oils, and I don't spray the finish. So I don't know what has caused this. And I don't want to throw this away. I want to uh, shear scrape this off, I guess, and start again. So I'll put the camera over there by the lathe and show you what I come up with. Maybe somebody out there can tell me though, what has caused this orange peel effect. Photographs don't really do a good job, but I'll try to take some decent ones of this. And if I've got them, you'll be seeing them now. All right, I'm going to go over the lathe and shear scrape this back down to bare wood. And by the way, there are more than 20 coats of poly on here. I was hoping that it would level out as I added some, but that wasn't happening. Well, let's think for a minute about the difference between shear scraping and shear cutting. Shear scraping is just taking a sharp edge and drawing it along the surface, taking off a very fine amount of wood, in this case finish, or whatever you're removing. Shear cutting simply means dropping the handle so that the angle of the edge is changing more and more sharply. Now, if you go too far, you'll end up with the edge going straight up and down and then it wants to skate along the surface, ruining it. So you want to find that area between scraping and skating and that's where you'll be cutting. And that's what we're, I'm going to try to do today. I'm going to be turning this at 1000 RPM. Now I was able to see that the reflection was slowly dimming and now I'm down to bare wood in this area. So I'm going to do the rest of it, same method, and then I'm probably going to have to sand it. It's not as nice as I would like it to be. In some areas it's just perfect, so it must be the way the grain is running. So I will finish the rest of this, sand it, and then I'll be back. I'd like to point out, if you're getting what some people call angel hair, nice thin strands of wood coming off of here, then you're cutting. If you're ending up with nothing but dust, then you're in a scraping scenario. Now I'm going to use my mixture of Zinsser Seal Coat and Methyl Hydrate, a 50-50 mixture for my sanding sealer. I've got this turned down to 100 RPM. And I'm just going to pour some on and spread it with this shop towel.
The wood is very dry, so it's absorbing lots of it. I'll let that dry for a little while. And then I'll put a second coat on, sanding after each coat, probably at 600, and then I'm going to put the poly on. Well, I got one coat of wipe on poly put on here and forgot to turn the camera on while I was doing it, but it's not like you haven't seen that before and won't see it before the end of this video. Anyway, I think I've got that same problem in there and no idea what's doing it. But I'm going to reverse chuck this now, put the tenon into the chuck, do the interior, and then I will finish the whole thing at once and we'll see how it turns out. So let's get over to the lathe and finish turning this piece. There is some chipping right around the outside here. So the first thing I want to do is just trim off a little bit, maybe the first half inch in here. And I'm going to do that with my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I want to make sure that the flute is closed, in other words straight up and down, otherwise it may tend to want to skate along the surface, which would not make my day. I'm going to be turning this at 1000 RPM. That's taken all that chipping off of there. Now I can start to hollow this out. After a couple of minutes of turning, I like to re-tighten on the tenon just to make sure it's not going to let go. I'm starting to reach a little too far in there. With the gouge going over that far, I can get a lot of vibration. So I just want to turn this, get a little closer inside there. Okay, got a big knot in there, making everything bounce around a little bit. Gonna have to try to take some shallower cuts. I'm going to use my depth gauge and see how far I've really got to go. Oh, there's a long way to go yet before I have to worry about making a funnel. I prefer to leave the bottom very thick. I like them to be a little bottom heavy, especially when they have a small base like this, just to keep them from falling over too easily. 
So I'm not going to go a lot deeper than this, but a little bit. And I'm getting enough vibration now that I want to get this in there a little further as well. Just have to make sure that the tool rest is not going to bind on that wood and that the gouge can still get into the center. So I'm good to go there. Now I know that someone out there is sitting there thinking, Gord, you need to get a bowl rest. Well, I have a bowl rest, actually, but it's too large for a bowl this size. By the time I get that to fit in there, I need the post to be into the banjo about the center of my bedways, and I cannot move the banjo that far forward. So that's why I'm staying with the straight tool rest. just about gone as deep as I want to go and I think I'm going to switch to my scraper now it's getting a little tough to get around that corner without hitting this edge here this knot that I find so beautiful on the outside and I'm sure the camera's not picking up at all is really nasty on the inside so this could be quite a test of scraping see how this goes This wood is extremely dry, which is making for some nasty dust. But it's not scraping too badly, although it's not ever going to be real smooth and I will certainly have to sand it a lot. What I want to do now is just make a little shelf here. I think I'm going to make this a lidded bowl. So I'll take care of that now. I want to make a little shelf in here for the lid to fit on. And I'm going to use about half of this. So I'm just going to define it with the skew chisel and then use a peeling cut to take it down. And I'm not going to go very deep at all. I'm going to want the lid to be a little bit proud of the top and I don't want a real thick lid. broke the knot out real good right there. Not quite sure what to do with that except live with it. I think that's deep enough. And now I'm just going to sand everything sure if I should try to fill that. Oh, I think I'm going to just leave that alone. It's a little bit of the character of the wood. I'll be back after I finish sanding all of this. I have it sanded to 400 grit now. I'm quite happy with the way it's turned out. Now I'm just putting sanding sealer on it. I'll do the same as I did before. Two coats of this, sanding after each coat once it dries to 600 grit. And then I will put on 
wipe on Polly again. Once that's all finished, I can carry on and make a lid for this. I'll be back to show you some progress in a little while. In the past, whenever I have used Wipe On Poly, I've always put a coat on, fairly thin, let it dry, and then after it's dry, sanded it with about 600 grit sandpaper before putting the next coat on. Now I've put two coats on this so far and they're looking real good but I've changed my method. I did a little research and these days for me anyway research means YouTube. So I took a look at how other people are applying their poly and what they're doing is putting on a coat, letting it sit for three or four minutes to soak into the wood and then wiping off the excess. And they're doing a lot of coats that way and at the end they're coming up with some very fine work. So that's what I'm trying this time. I'm just going to make sure it's well coated, let it sit for three or four minutes and then wipe off the excess. All right, it's been sitting there for a few minutes now. So I'm just gonna go in with this cotton rag and just take out all the excess that I can. According to what I saw other people talking about, a fresh coat of poly is supposed to soften up the previous coats and have them blend. This is looking pretty good. So I'm going to do this for a few more coats, then I'll be back to show you the results. I have always applied my Minwax Wipe On Poly with blue shop towels. I don't remember who it was, but someone told me that was the thing to use, and I've always been fairly pleased with it, although I always also felt there were some fine lines. Just for the heck of it, I recently, as in two hours ago, tried one of these two inch gauze pads and I am blown away by how smooth it was. That was not this piece, it was on, a, on the, what's going to be the lid for this. So now I want to try using the pad to add another coat on the interior and the outside now no longer has that orange peel look that I was seeing. So I'm going to try this pad to put another coat or two on the outside and see how that works. I hope the lighting is good enough and the camera positions are good enough to give a decent view of this. I'm going to do the interior here first. Now on the outside, I had been putting on a coat and then wiping off the excess, as I explained earlier. And I put 10 coats on like that, but I'm not real thrilled with the look. So now I'm gonna use this gauze pad in hopes that that will make a difference. I'll do a couple of coats like this, and then I'll bring it, we'll take a look and see what kind of job it's done. Well, so far it's just gorgeous. No lines of any kind that I can see. I'll keep it spinning to hopefully have it level out. So I finally got to the point where I'm happy with this finish. Now I'm just hoping these rubber buttons on the coal jaws don't ruin it. 
but I'm going to turn off the bottom now. I've brought the live center up in there just to support it for a little while. And now it's time to turn this off. Oh, my gouge feels like it needs another homing. Oh yes, a freshly sharpened tool can make such an amazing difference. All right, what I want to do now is drill the recess for my logo coin, and then I'll put a couple of rings around here with my skew chisel. Turning it at 250 RPM. I don't like to turn it too fast. There's no reason to overheat the bit. Here's a look at the bottom. Now let's take a look at turning the lid. I've had this piece of maple sitting around in my shop for years. It's got some, I believe, beautiful grain inside because of the burls that are on the outside. I've been just trying to figure out what to do with it. I think I'm going to take it, put it up on its edge, cut a slab off that I can use, and hopefully some of the grain that I'm sure would be beautiful is going to go through and I can use that for the lid. So I'll take it to the bandsaw, see what I can come up with. I'll be back to show you. All right, I got it cut. First I cut the top part off here, all the burl on it. There is some nice grain going through a little bit at least. And I cut this apart. So I've got a piece here. I didn't measure the thickness, but it's got to be between an inch and a half and two inches. So that should work just fine. I have a six inch disc. So now I will move that around here and try to figure out where I get the best grain pattern to make my lid from. And then I've got a thin one for some time in the future. Very rough on the outside, but I'm sure I can do something with it somewhere down the road. So I'm going to figure out what to do to cut this out. I'll be back later. And there I have my six inch disc. I've drilled a 3 8 inch hole all the way through. I'm going to put it on a woodworm screw and then when I have finished it on the top I'll have the hole ready so I can put some kind of a small pole or finial. You know I'm not going to think that far ahead so I'll see what I come up with then. Anyway, time to take it over to the lathe see what we can come up with here. First thing I'm going to do is face this off, try to straighten it out. I'm going to be turning it at 1000 RPM, I'm going to use a pull cut with my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. The actual outside diameter of this lid needs to be just a hair under five and five eighths of an inch. And I have set this to five and five eighths, and I'll take it down to that.
I have three cracks. You might be able to see them on this angle. There's one right here, one there, and one there. Now this one's going to definitely be turned away, but I've put some thin CA glue into these two. I'm not sure how deep it's going to penetrate, but we'll see if it's enough. I want to shape this, but I want to leave a flat area around the center, I think about right there as a minimum. I'm going to just start turning this away now. 1000 RPM again with my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. Alright, the one crack was turned away. This is not looking too bad. I think that CA glue sunk down in there pretty well. So I'm just going to keep shaping this. I want a bit of an OG shape to this lid. I'm going to speed this up to 2000 now. Fairly small piece and the extra speed will probably make for smoother cuts. I think I need to come in a little deeper in here. All right, I think that's not looking too bad. I'm going to sand this and then place it into the vessel and just see what it looks like. I have it sanded to 400. I'm quite pleased with the way it looks. Now I'm going to use this sanding sealer again using a piece of cotton cloth to apply it. I will do the usual two coats, sanding after each coat with probably 600 or 800 grit, and then I will get to the poly. Now my intention is to completely finish the top and then reverse it and turn the inside. Back to the wipe on poly now. I'm going to put it on and leave it on like I used to do. I just want to see the comparison to the job that I do on the other piece. I'll do a number of coats again and I'll be back later. I've taken an old quarter inch wood chisel and ground it down and made essentially a negative rake scraper. I want to take just a little bit of the finish off along here just to make sure I've got a gluing surface. I took a piece of quarter inch plywood drilled a 3 8 inch hole in the center so it will fit on the woodworm screw, cut it to a 5 inch disc, and now I can use that flat surface to support the top of this lid. Now let's see how true this runs. 
it's looking good. And now I'm going, going to trim this back a little bit. It's thicker, it's going to be higher than I want it to be. So I want to take at least a quarter of an inch off of there. Then I will set that down into the vessel and see how it looks. I want to see just how close I am to that woodworm screw. I've got about an inch there. I want to make sure I leave a little bit of a gap. Not looking too bad, going to need a fair amount of sanding. But I want to see now how that's going to fit into the vessel. Well, it fits the way I want it to. I don't think that looks too bad. I don't want a friction fit lid. If you've got a friction fit lid, this has to be held down while it's lifted off. This way, nobody has to even touch the vessel. You just come and pick up the lid and away you go. I have put a pencil mark one half inch from the end of this little dowel. When I push it in and that's flush, that's where I want to be. I think that'll give me lots of space at the top. So now I'm going to just turn this down a little more. I think that's going to do it. I'm just going to sand all this now and then I'll be back. All right, I'm quite happy with this. I think that looks pretty good. I was debating on putting some rings on here just for ornament, but I think this grain pretty much speaks for itself. It's going to be beautiful once I get some finish on there and it makes it pop. So now I want to make some kind of a button just to fill this, and disguise the hole. I want to make something from a contrasting wood. I'm just having a hard time deciding what. So I'll go and figure that out and I'll be back to show you. I think walnut would be a nice contrast. I'm going to use my roughing gouge just to round this over. Then I will use a parting tool to put a tenon on the end. And I have a 3 8 inch wrench to judge when it's the right size. All right, I thought, should have thought of it. I'm going to have to change to the cone live center. Now I'll be able to get this down to the 3 8 of an inch that I want. Now, if I wasn't so lazy, I would have sharpened one of these tips, and then you can actually use that to cut it to size. But I just didn't get around to that. 
Now I want to see how this is going to fit in the top of the lid. Very nice and snug. All right, I'm going to just make that tenon a little longer, then I'm going to reverse it and put it into some pin jaws so I can turn a button on here. I'll be back after I start that. Now the question I have to answer is, how large should I make this button? And I kind of think, done properly, it can look pretty nice in there, that full size. So I'm going to leave it that size. Now I'll put it in these pin jaws and turn it. I don't want a real high button, of course, so I'm just going to part this off. Just going to cut the rest of that off with a saw, turning it 2000 RPM. I think I'll just sand that up and it should be good. Just got a little bit of tight bond on a toothpick. Make sure it stays around the hole here. So it's covered up by the walnut piece. Push it in. Tap it in with the mallet. That should be good. I think that looks nice. All right. While that's drying, I can work on the finial or whatever kind of handle I'm going to put on here. I'm going to leave this on here actually. Put finish on it. This is the piece of walnut I'm going to use for the finial. Now there's quite a bad split right across this corner. I'm hoping most of that, if not all of it, will be turned away. I need to make the base of the finial an inch and a half across, just so it fits on top of here. I'm going to first round this over, then put a tenon, 3 8 inch tenon on the end, which will fit into the pin jaws and then will fit into the hole in the top of the lid. I'm going to use my roughing gouge. I'm going to turn this at 1000 RPM and just round it over. And once again, I have to change to the other cone-shaped live center. I took my 3 8 inch wrench, took it to the grinder, and sharpened up this point. So once I get down close to 3 8 of an inch, I'll see how well that's going to work. Well, it's not a great deal of help when I forget to turn on one of the cameras. But anyway, this will give you a little better look from this angle of how this works. So I've got this down to size now, and I'm just going to carry on shaping this piece. I want the finial to be two and a half inches high. I'll just make a mark here that I can see as I'm turning. I have set these calipers to an inch and a half, so when I get down to the inch and a half I want, I'll know I'm ready to turn from there. Now it's time to start turning this.
All right, there's not much support left there, but there's enough that I think I can make use of it and sand the rest of this. So I will sand this and then I'll be back to take that little bit off. All right, I have this sanded down to 400 grit, which I think is plenty. Now, I could bring my chisel in here and part this off. But the thing that worries me is what's going to happen to this piece when I do that? I don't know where it's going to fly around. It could come around and snap the end off of this. So I think I'm going to use this flush cut saw and just cut it off here just to take care of that little worry. Now, if I support this with my hand, I should be able to get my spindle gouge in here and cut that off. And if I can do a fine enough job, I may not even need to do much, if any, sanding here. Now, because I don't want too sharp a point on there, I'm going to take some 400 grit sandpaper and just try to round it over a little bit. And I think that will do. Well, I can't see any reason to change finishing techniques now. So I've put a coat of sanding sealer on there. And now I'm going to go with wipe on poly again. And after I got two or three coats on there, I'll be back to show you the results. Well, I think it's looking pretty good. I think the proportions are good with the finial that I put on here to lift it off. My wife said she likes the way the walnut offsets the color, the dark colors in the vessel, but it's not actually finished. Did you notice the mistake I made? Were you sitting there going, no gourd weight, you gotta... I think I've mentioned before that I am not blessed with a whole lot of patience. So when I got to the point where I had the tenon finished, I couldn't wait to get it reversed into the chuck so I could do this part. And what I forgot to do was make this part in here concave. I left it flat, but it's not even perfectly flat. It's actually a little bit proud toward the inside, which means that when I put it on here, I've got a very fine gap. Now you have to look for it to see it, but it's still bugging me. So now what I want to do I've made this piece, and this will fit in there. Then I've made some slots. I'm gonna put this hose clamp around there, tighten this in there, and then try, without screwing everything up, to make that a little bit concave. I'll put some masking tape around here to protect it a little bit. Take it over to the lathe and do that. Next and hopefully last step before I glue this thing in here. I've wrapped electrical tape around the hose clamp just to make sure that that piece is held down, not flying around all over the place. I brought up the cone in the live center just to make sure I had this put in there straight. And I'm just going to leave it there. It's not really a lot of support, but better than nothing. And I'm going to be using my quarter inch spindle gouge. And I'll be turning at 1000 RPM. I think that's enough. I may raise it to 2000. And I'm going to start by just taking off a hair off of this piece that the finial is fit into. I don't want to take too much off at all. And then I just want to make it a little bit concave.
And I think that should be enough. Now I'll just put it on and see what it looks like. That is looking much better now. Nice and tight seam. Now I want to do is glue this in. And then I'm going to put a little more finish on here. And I'll be back to show you the end results. And this is the finished product. I'm very pleased with this. The little gauze pads I showed you for putting the finish on made a big difference. Improved it a lot. But then, Barry from the Central Alberta Woodturners Guild recommended I try these. They're called stain applicator cloth. They're made by a company called Fenora Textile in Montreal, Quebec. They're Canadian made, but you may be able to order them if you want to try them on their website. It's fenora.com. I'll put that down in the description box below the video in case you want to take a look at what they've got. Well, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed making it, although it was a bit of a struggle. I want to thank all those people who've subscribed to me. I appreciate your support. It's what keeps me going. Click the like button if you like what I'm doing. Let me know I'm doing something right. And I hope you'll come back next time. In the meantime, have fun in your shop and be safe. Take care now.